and little do I know. But I know that these are terrifically exciting times, not only if you are <laughs> from Germany. I tend to wear that everywhere now. Uh, really proud of the team, great teamwork. But these are really times of unprecedented change, and that brings a lot of challenges, but wow, it brings a tremendous amount of opportunities as we go forward. So if we take a look at these challenges and at the opportunities, what's really happening around us? Phenomenal demographic changes that shift the center of power in the world. Phenomenal changes around the IT revolution. There is a war for our attention that we need to win. There are new business models that we need to understand and how our life changes everything, how we live, how we learn, how we, how we work. Just take a look at the demographics. In 1800, we had one billion people on the planet. In 1960, and some of you will remember, I unfortunately do, we had three billion. Now we have over seven billion, and soon we'll have nine billion people on the planet. And a third of those seven billion are kids. They're 15 and under. And they want to have access to education and to health and to a cleaner environment. And we need to do something about that. And 85% of those live in the emerging markets while we have aging societies. So we've got to think about this globally. And then think about the IT revolution and the data that's out there. We produce more data in two days than we did in all of mankind from the beginning until 2003. In two days. It's amazing. We have more mobile phones out there than we have people on the planet. I go to very remote areas in Africa or in India, and everybody has a mobile phone. And one in five is a smartphone. And that'll be soon two in five and three in five. And that democratizes access to information and knowledge. It's really phenomenal. But all that together really changes the, war, the way how we work, where we work, and most importantly, also who's in the driving seat. So take a look. Everything around us is going digital. Some stuff I find really useful with some, you know, I might not need it, but others do. But take a look at the wearables. You know, some have bracelets, some wear it as jewelry, some wear it, you know, embedded in the skin or in your clothes. And some use it to tell them that they need to exercise more, or they need to eat better. And some use it to connect, you know, via sensors with their family that's across the ocean. And you can actually feel a touch. Quite amazing. Some just store data with it. And some really use it to augment their physical abilities. You can use contact lenses that zoom in on, on, on basically information. So if you're really seeing impaired, this will help you to really, you know, basically live a normal life. Amazing. Or you take a look at the My Vessel. That's a, that's a cup. And whatever you put into that cup, it'll tell you exactly the ingredients and whether this is good for you or not. So have you gotten your proteins for the day? You know, it has sensors that connect to the internet. Or uh, do you drink too much coffee and you're getting dehydrated? So again, you know, you might find that really useful. Uh, and going forward, all of these, say, the wearables might become even more useful when they tell you that you are a candidate for a heart attack in the next half hour or a stroke because it connects to your blood temperature, to your pulse, to everything, to all your living vitals. So this stuff becomes more and more relevant for everybody, I think. 3D printing. Today, you can already print hips or fully functionable hands, body parts. It's just one example. Just about everything will be printable. And then digital cigarettes are turning companies like Philip Morris, who used to be tobacco companies, into pharmaceuticals, because that's where they spend their R&D. Nothing remains the same. So now imagine you're a kid and you grow up in that, in, in, in that type of times. Everything is digital. Physical experiences get replaced through digital experiences. And also, you know, economically difficult times. You don't have, you know, all of the means available. So young people start to make choices, and they'd rather invest in technology than getting a driver's license. Driver's licenses are going south significantly. But not only do they not want to get the licenses, they don't want to drive. The millennials single-handedly uh, brought down the music industry, different media consumption. And they start to share, because that makes the buck go further. You know, if I go on vacation and rent, my rent, rent out my room, I'll rent somebody else's, and it's a, it's a wash, basically. Thoughts go away from owning everything 
to basically sharing. And it's also a generation that wants to share when it comes to, you know, basically protecting the world. And they see a responsibility that we all share, which is really, really very encouraging. So all of that leads to completely different business models out there. I was in Washington two weeks ago, and we were just Ubering around everywhere. You know, you don't really take cabs when you are in the big U.S. cities anymore. It's coming. And why, instead of fighting it, don't, you know, a lot of the, the cab companies embrace it and also become part of that system so that they don't have any idle times? I think it's about knowing what's going on and seeing how that can possibly work for you. And it's just about every industry that gets disrupted. Transport, we've just heard, Uber or Airbnb. Or you think about finance. You know, if you can't get your loan from the bank, then you find you know, a peer-to-peer -peer organization, lending clubs, or like Kickstarter that finances great creative projects that they financed over $1 billion already. Media, we've already heard, or renting. Why do I need an agent when I can do peer-to-peer -peer renting or leasing or selling? Things are moving very, very quickly, and we need to understand that. And where is that all leading to? These are times where companies want to be more flexible as well. They don't want to have a workforce like you know, we had when we grew up in our parents or in our own job market. Contracts get flexible because companies want to scale up and down. So they will just hand out basically projects going forward. 65% of the kids in school today will end up in a job that doesn't exist today. Just think about it. Because they'll create it, the companies will create it. Things are changing so incredibly fast. In some societies, they might go quicker, and somewhere it might take longer. But we might as well know where all of that is leading. And a lot of the forward-thinking companies have started to hire people just based on their knowledge and not based on the degree that they have. Very, very different out there. So what type of skills do I need in order to be successful in this type of world? You know, some call them 21st century skills. I think it's all about investing yourself lifelong and knowing where to get the information. It doesn't stop anymore. Universities were geared up to give you a degree, and then you're off and you build your career. That's not how it works anymore. People have to invest in themselves all their lives, and they need to know where to find that information. And I think there's a lot of phenomenal information out there with the massive open online courses. You can even get accredited degrees out there now through massive open online courses. And again, it's democratized the access that was reserved to just a few and now can make that available across the world. At HP, we also have a, a MOOC, our own MOOC, because we realized, although there are a lot of digital natives out there, few of them know how to use IT to transform their lives. They know how to game and communicate and do a lot of things, but to fundamentally use information technology to build a business plan if you want to be an entrepreneur or a marketing plan and set up your website, do all of these things, they don't know how to do it. So we've created this program that's available in seven languages. And again, it's available to people in China, just as well as in India, as well as, as here. So it really democratizes the access to information. But looking at all of that, just think all of this information that now gets stored in the cloud and the ecological and environmental footprint that the cloud has. If the cloud were a country, it would be the fifth largest country in the world. And it's only going to get get more and more and more information. We will need to build data centers worth $20 billion over the next few years that will take up the space of Manhattan and we'll have to build power plants to power them because we don't have enough renewable energies. It's not sustainable. We use one and a half Earth today when we only basically, that means you know, the Earth takes one and a half years to regenerate from how we extract resources and how we produce waste. In the next 15 years, this will be two Earths. People that live in California use seven Earths today. The capacity of the world is 18 billion people, but only if everybody lives like people in Rwanda. It's not sustainable. Business models have to be disrupted. And this is what we've done at HP to the server line, because this is where all of this information sits. So we've taken chips that are used in smartphones and put them into the server. So now the server is this size. 45 can sit in one rack, and they share the resources, the cooling, the networking, the energy, making them 89% more energy efficient, 80% less space, and 77% cheaper. HP.com runs on this. We get 300 million clicks a day, and it runs on the equivalent of 12 light bulbs. That's how we need to disrupt, because if we don't do it, somebody else will, and it's something that needs to be done to preserve our resources. And we also need to use technology to really protect the world. 
This is a photo that's three days old. I just came back from the rainforest in Costa Rica, but we're doing a project with Conservation International. It's an agency that wants to protect the tropical forests around the world. So what they do is they put out sensors and cameras in 16 rainforests, and they get massive amounts of data back. And in the past, it's taken them six months for 30 researchers to wade through that, which is really just looking in the, in the, in the back room, uh, in the rear view mirror. You're not even forward looking. And now we're able to do this by bringing Vertica, which is a big data platform, big data analytics, to this partnership. You can do it in one day with one person. And you can spend your time then thinking, what do we need to do differently? And why is this so important? Just sit back and take a deep breath. Do me the favor, just. 40% of the air that you breathe here comes straight from the rainforest, 40%. 80% of our food originates there. One in four medicines comes straight out of the rainforest. We need to do more to protect the rainforests. And I have a, a gentleman, I'd like to say it's a friend, but I, that would go too far, but I have a gentleman in a video who's going to give you a two-minute quick overview of this partnership, and I wonder whether you recognize his voice. It's one of the greatest voices of all time, I think. Forest. Forest. Home, home to more, more than, than half the, the animal, animal and plant species, species on Earth. A source, a source of livelihood for more than 1.6 billion people. Forests, forests a source, a source of life-saving life medicine. medicine. The, the health, health of forests is essential, essential for biodiversity and, and the well-being of people. I'm, I'm Harrison Ford, Ford Vice, Vice Chair, Chair of Conservation, Conservation International, an organization, an organization I, joined I joined more than 20, 20 years ago. We work, we work with governments, governments communities, and businesses to value and protect biodiversity and the, and the reservoirs and natural resources on which people depend. Through our work, governments and the private sector have begun to recognize the direct connection between natural resources and economic and global security. HP understands this connection and has joined Conservation International in a critical project to look at what is happening inside forests on a near real-time basis to measure what was once immeasurable. With HP's breakthrough technology, Conservation International's tropical ecology assessment and monitoring scientists can analyze data from over 6,000 square kilometers of tropical forests worldwide in a matter of hours instead of months. This early warning system alerts us to declines in tropical forests, helping inform and guide conservation action. The pressures on forests and other ecosystems have never been greater. The stakes are never higher. Protecting nature is not an option, but a necessity. Nature doesn't need people. Be people. You need nature. So, thank you. So if you take all of that together, why is all of this so relevant? I think because the rules of the games have changed and are changing every day. When you offer services on the internet, it doesn't matter whether you're a female or a male, whether you're young or whether you're old, you have to really bring great quality. When you take a look at all of these, these changes upon us, I think the most important thing is that you understand what they are, so you can choose what's relevant for yourself and what you want to apply. And I think that's the great thing about this conference, because there's so much that you will get in terms of you know, imagination, innovation, new ideas. And I would just encourage people to just think about how they can apply that going forward. But do it in a way to create shared value. I think that is important as anything else. A value for society, environment, people, as much as a value that you create for your own company. And I think the workshops, as Steffi has said, and, and the agenda is just built around all of this. So I'd encourage people to really take the most out of it, have fun, go connect, learn, and most importantly, apply it afterwards. And I think it'll change everybody's life going forward. So thank you, and have a fantastic conference. <laughs>